Hi, what's happening? It's your Rico from Street Scores, and I'm still working on my 53-man roster breakdown, so I will come out with that soon, within the next couple of few days. Um, but I also just want to let the dust settle, because we keep making roster changes and things like that. You never know if somebody may end up on IR or something like that. So I'm waiting for the dust to completely settle, because I feel like a lot of the future moves that they're making... Um, they already made like a lot of premeditated moves, assuming that certain things will happen in the future, like looking at like Chase Young's injury and things like that. So I feel like I'm going to wait until we get like a full grasp of the roster that we're going to go into week one with to do like a full 53 man roster breakdown. But we still got to talk about a lot of things. Like, first of all, they signed my boy linebacker Jabril Cox from... I mean, LSU technically, right before he went to the draft, but North Dakota State, y'all know this channel, you know me, that was my boy. He's only on the practice squad right now, but we're going to talk about why I feel like he will not stay there long. Also, big Chase Young injury update, literally just like a few minutes to an hour ago from Ron Rivera. Of course, Fedarian Mathis and F.L. Bada were placed on IR. We're going to talk about Fedarian Mathis and this second round pick curse that the commanders have right now. Is it a real thing or is it blown a little out of proportion? All of that type of stuff and a lot more. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned for all of the content. Once the regular season kicks up, I'm doing live streams every regular season game, post game live streams with the call in show where y'all call in. I'm doing game previews in video form, game reviews in video form, all kinds of injury updates, any breaking news. And I'm still working on these rookie film sessions, so stay tuned for all of that. Without further ado, let's get it. You tell your family you can be a commander. All right, just to name a few. We signed center Tyler Larson and Abdullah Anderson from the practice squad. They're now on the official 53-man roster. We placed Fedarian Mathis and F.A. Obata on the injured reserve list. So those are where those two spots came from that allowed us to sign Tyler Larson and Abdullah Anderson. And, of course, we signed my boy, linebacker Jabril Cox. Man, I'm so excited about that. But before we get to that... Um, at one point in time, we also signed Alex Armand back as well. There were also reports that we wanted to re-sign Alex Armand to like the 53-man roster, take him off of the practice squad, but apparently that didn't happen yet. Again, they brought up Abdullah Anderson, probably but because we lost F.A. Obata, who's a guy that, you know, mostly plays edge rusher, but also plays quite a bit inside. We already lost for Daniel Mathis. I know we have John Ridgeway. But still, the depth of interior defensive line is not looking too good right now. So they prefer to bring up another defensive tackle rather than as much as I love Alex Armagh. And he technically deserves to make this roster more than Curtis Hodges. Curtis Hodges is literally only, only on this roster because he's six foot eight. That's literally it. Um, but... Hey, man, that's a guy that you can put on the practice squad. You don't have to worry about anybody else taking him. Of course, he's from Atlanta, so I'm rooting for him. But strategy-wise, it makes sense why they didn't bring up Alex Armand. The plan was to do that. But then once they saw that, well, we're going to talk about F.A. about it a little later when Ron Rivera spoke on his injury and updated us on that. But basically, once they realized they were going to have to place F.A. Obata on the IR, they were like, yeah, we can't do the Alex Armand thing. We're going to have to bring up Abdullah Anderson for that. Um, but yeah, man, uh, they're clearly interested in Abdullah Anderson. They want him on the 53-man roster, but it will have to take somebody else to move out of the way for him to get there. And it's really interesting, too, because the commanders weren't able to get any claims on the waiver wire. And apparently, we only tried to claim one person. Like, we tried. Like At first, people were thinking that we didn't even try, but it was like, you can't really assume that. Maybe we just didn't get any. But then it was later reported that, first of all, we were 16th in the waiver wire, which is not great. You're not going to get a lot of players being in the middle. You would prefer to have a higher win than that. But we tried to get tight end Elijah Higgins. That was our only claim that we put in. And that's a guy who played under Washington quarterbacks coach Tavita Pritchard. And he's our QB's coach right now, back all the way in Stanford. He ended up going to the Cardinals. So um, maybe we'll see him week one going against us rather than playing for us against the Cardinals. Because right now they are, they are a roster severely devoid of talent right now. They have a whole yard sale going on right now, getting rid of anybody, trading, releasing, whatever. Um, and then so, of course, with them being so bad and having a higher draft pick status, higher waiver wire priority, they were able to get that guy. We wanted him, but the Cardinals just simply got him because they have a higher waiver wire priority. Um, also, really interesting stats from my boy at Burgundy Blog. Make sure you follow him on Twitter and all of that. He said 32 teams cut from 90 to 53 players this week. 
That's 1,184 total released a wave, and only 24 guys got claimed yesterday by yesterday. That's only 2%. So remember that. When we're panicking about the commanders releasing certain players like Jared Patterson and guys like that, you know, when in doubt, it's not that likely that another team will pick them up either, man. A lot of these people prefer the evil that they know. Like, I mean, I know like Jared Patterson is a really talented player and Jared Patterson, I definitely feel like is better than a lot of running backs that other teams may have, especially on their practice squads and things like that. But I mean, another team hasn't had the chance to see Jared Patterson day in, day out, um, every week, morning to night their work ethic the way they practice and things like that not only what they do when they get the ball in their hand and, and preseason action but how they practice how they come to meetings film sessions and stuff like that um they they have a better idea of how the players that are already on their roster that they move the practice squad better than the jared patterson so even though jared patterson is more talented than most of the running backs out there especially that are on other teams practice squads um you don't really have to worry about another team snatching them up as much as you think and that stat proves that. Also, zero wide receivers claimed off wa waivers league-wide. Like, out of the entire league, no receivers. So, you know, it's kind of like you can doubt that Tinsley would have even been one of those guys. I mean, I think Tinsley is very talented. I think he has the potential to be minimum wide receiver four on a, on a wide receiver group that's not ours. We just happen to have a really talented receiver group. But Tinsley could easily go and be wide receiver four for a lot of other teams. And I feel like he can easily work his way up to wide receiver two by some point this regular season. I think he's that talented uh, as an undrafted free agent even. Again, I mean, he was Bailey Zapp's one, like, favorite receiver, 1,400-yard receiver a couple of years ago. Then he transferred to Penn State, had a down year, hurt a little bit and stuff like that. Then Tesswell, only reason he's an undrafted free agent. He went out there and looked like he should have never been an undrafted free agent this whole offseason for us, especially in that last preseason game. was He he was, like, our highest-graded player out of the entire preseason game. At the very least, our highest offensive-graded player. He showed out. He looked like a starter amongst backups. But still, even with all of that talent, Based on the fact that no wide receivers were claimed on waivers at all league-wide says that maybe he would have cleared waivers and maybe we could have brought him back on the practice squad. It doesn't really matter, though, because we ended up keeping him on that official, initial 53-man roster. But also, um, none of our cuts got claimed. So, you know, it's just like really full circle doesn't really matter again at the end of the day we kept them on the 53 um but i'm just saying all of that to let you know don't panic on the guys that we cut because we're more than likely going to be able to retain them anyway also of course the commander's place for darian mathis on short term ir not long term not the full season win but short term so he's going to be gone for at least a few weeks but at the very least we can we can expect to have him back in the regular season whether that will matter like if he can actually play more than one series we'll see that um, but yeah, we brought back Tyler Larson after putting Fedarian Mathis on IR. Now, speaking of Fedarian Mathis, it's just crazy. Shouts out my boy Pedro Smith. If you're not following him on Twitter, YouTube, all of that, man, you're missing out. But he brought up a great point. I was thinking the same thing. Fedarian Mathis played one series in the regular season in 2022 and got hurt. Fedarian Mathis played one series in the preseason in 2022 and got placed on IR. Like, this is ridiculous, man. This is, I mean, it's like we're getting literally nothing out of them. Shouts out to my boy at Commander's Realm on Twitter. Brought up another great point. Second round picks to receive a second contract in Washington this century. 2008 Fred Davis, 2006 Rocky McIntosh, and 2002 Liddell Betts. And that is, isn't even like the greatest list ever. I, I loved Fred Davis, um, but he didn't even last long here in his second contract. From what I remember, um... Really, our only hope as far as succeeding at second round picks right now are Samuel Cosme and Quan Martin. That's literally all we got. Quan Martin still looking a little iffy right now, but I believe in his talent. And Samuel Cosme is a star. I think he has like all pro potential at right guard. Literally like the next Brandon Sheriff level player, literally in my eyes. I think he's that great. Outside of that, it's ugly. Quan Martin last year, um, this recent draft, 2023, um, and, you know, he struggled quite a bit in the preseason, but I'm not worried about that. DBs tend to DBs and quarterbacks have the um, the hardest growing pains when it goes from going from college to the NFL point blank period. They struggle the most making that transition to the next level. So I'm not surprised. I'm not worried as well. Um, then you have Fedarian Darian Mathis last year who got to watch that. Um, then Samuel Cosme the year before that. I think he's a star. I think that was a still in the second round. Then we didn't have a second round pick that, that the, the year before that. Chase Young, Antonio Gibson, um, we skipped second round. Then we didn't have a second round pick the year before that as well. Haskins, Montez Sweat, then Terry McLaurin right after that. 
And then you go all the way back to Darius Geis. You got Ryan Anderson the year before that. Sua Cravens the year before that. Preston Smith was I, right, but you know, the year before that. Trent Murphy the year before that didn't work out too well. David Amerson the year before that. So yeah, man, this second round pick curse isn't looking too good for us um, as far as overall history. But recently, I think Samuel Cosme um, two years ago, three years ago, and technically two years ago, and then Quan Martin this year, um, I think we have a lot of hope behind those guys. But for Darian Mathis, man, the clock is ticking. But at the end of the day, I feel like we'll be fine. FL Bada, him going to the um, short-term IR as well, I believe. Uh, that's not looking too good for us, but I'm not too worried. John Ridgeway is huge as depth, man. That man, physically huge. And also, man, as far as playing time and effect on the team, literally everything we need for Darian Mathis to do, which is be a double team eater, a space eater, a zero tech nose tackle that clogs up run lanes and stops the run really well. John Ridgeway does that as well as anybody in the NFL, honestly. He's elite at that. For Darian Mathis, the only thing is that he has maybe a tiny bit of pass rush upside, whereas John Ridgeway doesn't provide you much much on the pass rush side. But we're going to run a lot of five defensive linemen this year, probably more this year than we ever have in a while since Ron Rivera's been here at least, Jack DeRio and those guys. Um, so he's going to be on the field quite a bit. We're not going to expect him to pass rush. That's going to be Jonathan Allen, Chase Young, Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, and those guys, and even Andre Jones off the bench in the rotation and stuff like that. So, hey, man, John Ridgeway, what, you, what we need you to do, what we want for Darian Mathis to do, he can do really well. I'm not too worried about that. But at the same time, you want your second-round picks to pan out. You don't want to just keep throwing second-round picks in the trash. So I hope for Darian Mathis comes back. But now moving on. The Commanders also signed my boy, linebacker Jabril Cox from North Dakota State. Most people know him from LSU because he transferred to LSU his final season before going to the draft. I'm telling y'all, man, do not sleep on Jabril Cox. He will not be on the practice squad for long. We signed him to the practice squad. He's not on the 53-man roster. But again, do not count him out. And Rivera even said after we signed him, he confirmed that the Commanders really liked Jabril Cox coming out of the draft. Now, I couldn't tell because he made it all the way to like the what, fourth, fifth round. Yeah, the fourth round. Pick 115th overall. If we loved him that much, we would have taken him before the fourth round pick 115th. And I felt like we had linebacker that year. So I don't know how much we actually really liked him. I don't know if Ron Rivera is just saying that. Um, but either way, man, I'm glad that we got him regardless. Um, this man, Ron Rivera said that he really liked his skill set coming out of college. Now it's basically just a matter of learning the system. It's not the talent. Jabril Cox, as long as he can stay healthy and, and the talent is there, he learns the system. Um, I don't see him last on the practice squad very long, man. Ron Rivera said exactly, quote, he's a physical specimen, a young guy that can run and make an impact. So will have to learn and grow. But the skill set is what we're looking for as far as the position is concerned. A guy we really liked in the draft last year, unquote. And again, just to let you know, he was at North Dakota State from 2016 to 2019. Then he transferred to LSU for his senior season. Got drafted 2021, fourth round by the Dallas Cowboys, pick 115. And I remember being so upset about that because they already drafted Michael Parsons. And then it was like, bro, I don't need Jabril Cox too, man. Like, God, Lee, y'all taking all the linebackers. I remember, like, visibly being upset about that when i was live streaming during the draft and everything i know i live stream every draft y'all y'all can go back and look at the tape man i was pretty upset that we didn't end up getting jabril cox and then he went to the rival but now we have him you know it, it was a weird path it took longer than expected um it, it took two years longer than i expected but i'm still happy that we ended up with him and remember this is the guy that had an 84.7 coverage grade in single coverage right before he left to enter the NFL, his last year LSU, first, the first amongst linebackers, just to go ahead and put that out there, out of that, his entire draft class, he was first out of all linebackers in coverage and single coverage with no safety help, no help, no, no, no zone coverage, just straight up covering this guy. Um, he could literally erase a receiver or a tight end from a game. That's the type of talent he has to even dive deeper. The cover skills of Jabril Cox are his strong suit entering the NFL, according to Pro Football Focus. Jabril Cox didn't allow a single touchdown, nor was he penalized in 352 coverage snaps in which he defended 41 targets. That's ridiculous. And then in 1,114 coverage snaps during his entire collegiate career, he only allowed two touchdowns, but had eight interceptions. This is like literally, he has the potential to be one of the best coverage linebackers in the NFL. Point blank, period. I mean, of course, with this size of six foot three, 233, um, he has the build 
to be a potential really good run stopper. But that's the area of his game, the reason why he went in the fourth round, the reason why he's currently on our practice squad. Still, and also injury wise, we'll get to that. Um, but still needs to work on his run stopping a little bit, but his coverage ability goes without question. First of all, at LSU's pro day, his fastest time was a 454. And again, at six foot three, 233 pounds, can easily get up to 240 if he wanted to. That's ridiculous athleticism. And that is a guy that can erase tight ends along with Cameron Curl, maybe Derek Forrest, but hopefully Quan Martin and guys like Percy Butler. Jabril Cox comes in, he can do that immediately. But again, as of right now, don't get your hopes up too much because he's on the practice squad. So don't expect to see him week one against the Cardinals. But do I expect Jabril Cox to work his way up off of the practice squad at some point this season, this regular season? I do, man. That's too much talent just sitting on your practice squad for no reason, man. And, hey, man, I'm just remember, too, Jabril Cox chose the Washington Commanders over the Dallas Cowboys to go on our practice squad or their practice squad. He chose to come to ours. Now, it's also more than likely because he looked at our depth chart and was like, this is my clearest path to getting some real playing time and actually, like, being able to potentially even start for an NFL defense. So maybe that's why, but also at the same time, maybe he just preferred to play – in a better defense overall. I mean, I feel like we're going to have the best defensive line in football. I think the secondary is going to be un severely underrated. One of the top five, top ten secondaries in the NFL as well. Um, so he's probably looking like, hey, man, Jamin Davis, Cody Barton, David Mayo, Khalid Hudson. Like, there's a true path for me to get on the playing field and get off this practice squad onto the 53-man roster and get real playing time, real, like, a part of the real rotation and things like that way sooner for them than the Cowboys. So, hey, man, I'm telling you, he chose us. We wanted him. It's a mutual benefit right there. And don't forget, I know a lot of people say we don't want Cowboys trash, but John Ridgway, who we just talked about earlier, was technically Cowboys trash. They tried to sneak him onto the practice squad. We were able to snatch him up. And then, man, he turned into the John Ridgway that we know, body slamming people, a guy that I really hope we sign to a long-term extension soon after this. Not a heavy one, but somebody that I hope is part of the commander's team defense, defensive line until he retires. Hopefully, Jabril Cox is the same thing at linebacker, man. That could be huge for us. And then now, as far as a lot of injury updates, most notably a lot of the ones that Ron Rivera gave us today, like literally just less than an hour ago from when I'm recording this. Ron Rivera said as far as Chase Young, quote, I have no idea what the doctors are going to do, but I do know right now that he's told that he can continue to progress and get himself ready to go, unquote. And that's basically all of the info that we're going to get until Wednesday's injury report, which is next week, of course, in six days. Um, so that's not the most optimistic update on chase young but it's also not bad i mean first of all it's worth pointing out that chase young is not on the ir for darian mathis went to ir fl Bada's on the ir you have kyrick mcgowan even went to the ir jonathan williams went to the ir Caden smith the tight end brandon Dillon, the tight end brandon daniels our guy that we're trying to develop into an elite left tackle at some point maybe a year or two down the road if that ever happens they have him listed as a guard though um, David Bada, I remember, went to the IR back on August 10th. Curtis Brooks, August 8th, IR. Troy Abke, IR, August 8th. All of these guys that went to the IR, and again, some of these people are on short-term IR where we expect to get them back as soon as possible. These aren't like year-long ones. Chase Young isn't even on the short-term IR. So even if he doesn't play week one, per se, um, expect him to play within these first four weeks, basically. But I think it's quite likely that he could play week one against the Cardinals. We'll see. Um, but also, man, also um, it was reported that Chase Young is progressing nicely, according to a source, but it remains unclear if he will be available for Washington's week one home game against the Cardinals. Young has not participated in a full practice since the August 11th game against the Cleveland Browns. So, hey, man, I think he'll be fine, man. Again, everybody's saying that he's progressing along very well. We're not getting any definitive updates, but that's also because the commanders aren't obligated to do so until that Wednesday injury report when we literally have to tell everybody how Chase Young is doing. And also, FL Bada going on IR just to let you know. Ron Rivera updated us on that today. He said FL Bada has a patellar injury. They tried to have him practice, but it just didn't go well, which led to him being placed on the IR. So they tried to see if he could go. 
And I believe he's also on the short-term IR. Get well soon, because F.L. Bada is a great player for us as part of the rotation. He's insane depth, man. He should be starting for another defensive line. I'm not lying. Also, Ron Rivera said that the few days off for Logan Thomas and Kendall Fuller, quote, did those guys wonders, unquote. So it sounds like Logan Thomas and Kendall Fuller are progressing very well as well. So I'm really excited about the, the potential of those guys playing. But I feel like we all just need to take a step back as far as Terry McLaurin, Logan Thomas, Kendall Fuller, Chase Young. I feel like we can beat the Cardinals without those guys. I know the Cardinals are looking at us just like the same way we're looking at them. You can win that game. That's a winnable game. One of the one of your lesser opponents on your schedule. Um, but nah, I mean, not even trying to be arrogant. Don't rush those guys back too quickly for the Arizona Cardinals, man. So I feel like even if those guys can't go week one, don't risk it. I think we'll be fine and we should still win, I think, by double digits. We should beat them by two scores. I mean, they're literally having a garage sale right now on players, literally doing everything that they can to make sure that they lose games and get that probably that number one pick is probably what they're going for. Do they even have their number one pick? I believe they do, though. Oh, yeah, they did because they got the extra one from the Texans. So, yeah, they're definitely tanking. They don't even want to beat us. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of their fan base wants to beat us, but I don't even think the Cardinals themselves want to win. They want Caleb Williams right now. Honestly, Caleb Williams is already their starting quarterback, according to my book. So, not too worried about that. But, yeah, man, that's the injury updates. So, of course, Jabril Cox, man. I mean, this is a big high-reward, low-risk type of situation with him, man. So much talent. He's on your practice squad for extremely cheap. If he works his way up and becomes a different type of guy, he has Pro Bowl potential. If he turns into that, that would be huge, man. That would be big time for us. Also, lastly, before we get up out of here, Byron Pringle switched his jersey number from 16 to 3, which is really cool now because Terry McLaurin, if he doesn't play week one, now our top four receivers are wearing number one, number two, number three, and number four. That's really random. Super doesn't matter, but it's really interesting. So now we just got to get Mitchell Tinsley to change from that ugly number that he has, man, in the 80s. That's ugly, bro. Go ahead and find him another number. I know number eight is taken. Number, I don't know, man. I, I got to look at the jersey numbers and see who he could take. But we got to get him up out of what he currently has right now. Thank you, Byron Pringle, from changing to num from number 16 to 3. Mitchell Tinsley, you're next, man. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how I feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button. Stiff arm the subscription button. And stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button. I really appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate all the support, man. Staying patient with all of the content. Like I said, man, I'm, I'm working on a 53-man roster breakdown once the dust settles a little bit more like in the next couple of days or so. So stay tuned for that. Again, I appreciate all y'all, man. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. Your name is scrolling on the screen right now. And man, I'm gonna catch y'all later. Make sure y'all let me know in the comment section how y'all feel about all of the updates for Darian Mathis, our second round pick curse, us signing Jabril Cox. Are you as optimistic about him as I am? Chase Young's injury update, FL Bada, all of that stuff, man. I'm gonna catch y'all later. I'm out.